Hello, 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 hello. It's good to see you. Say hello. Welcome to the Husky Hockey Podcast, your number one resource for all things exhibition, Manitoba, time updated, related. Don't worry about going to CHN. It's not there for this heavy, heavy, all important tilt between your St. Cloud State Huskies and the Manitoba. What what are they? What's their names? Call them the Moose. Oh. Going back to the old IHL days, Manitoba Moose, baby. <laughs> the, man, man, the IHL, there we go. Did you ever, uh, I, I had a, I think I had a The Minnesota a Moose. I think I yeah, had a I puck that a was the Minnesota. Moves. Yeah? And I think I should, the, the, the man, Center? Yes. And I think Frank Saratori was the coach, actually. Hmm. Um, and I think the Manitoba Moose are, are they still, are they the Jets AHL? farm team now i think they're still in existence so i don't even know if we need to go back to the ihl days but um yeah i know i went to a couple of those a couple of the minnesota moose games decent uh decent logo brings back some good 90s uh, nostalgia for me yeah yeah that <laughs> logo was that logo what was, was the sweet. team and, and then it was not only it was a few years ago also in class a hockey that mammal Monticello, Annandale, Maple oh, Lake, yeah. the Mammal yeah. Moose uh, yeah. that they made a run in the uh, state tournament, which was a lot of fun yeah. to watch. It was. So, what was the team? Remember, like the year or two that they had the uh, professional rollerblade hockey league that was on like ESPN two for a hot minute. Minnesota had a team, and it was like the Arctic Freeze. Or something. It was like the Arctic something, or or, or or another, and I can't remember what it was called. And I think like Polar Bear was was involved in the logo of some sort. Um, I for some reason I I get that mixed up, or I get that in the same category as the Minnesota Moose because I feel it was in that same mid '90s era. But um, that was when. Well, well they had was... <laughs> they had pro beach hockey. And uh, that was like based in California, and there were like there was like inclines on behind the net, so like in a foosball where the the ball would kind of roll back in. But they didn't have like different; it wasn't associated with any place. But they had like the gargoyles or the X Express <laughs> or things like that. I remember that those jerseys were funky. I remember watching those and. Uh, Quite a quite a bit during the summer. I think I was a big like dog pound or dog something fan for whatever reason. But yeah, I I definitely uh, remember pro beach hockey. It was the roller hockey international was the league, and it was oh. the Minnesota Arctic Blast. Oh, they played at the they played at the Target Center. Um, <laughs> Nice. The things Arctic you Blast isn't uh, isn't that like a Powerade drink? I think it's yeah, it does sound like a Powerade flavor. Ninety four to ninety six, and they won the division both of those years. Or two, oh. so they played ninety four, ninety five, and ninety six. They played, they won the division two of those. And years, then so. they adopted the name State of Hockey, and this is why it's because of our roller hockey pow- prowess. Yeah, and so, but yet another winner, another Minnesota winner that is taken from us. God, you can't right? ha- you can't have winners in Minnesota. They got to move to the Nashville or wherever it was, um, or Los Angeles. That's right. So, um, yeah. Obviously, everything I said about Manitoba was uh, tongue in cheek and facetious. We're not going to go into it. We're not going to break down the game. Uh, we don't care that much. Uh, but there is an update to the start time, and by update, I mean they just said it. So it's Friday. Uh, at one o'clock, so um, get out of work early, beat the rush. I guess um, I don't know a lot of the thought process behind that start time, but um, I was actually, you know, I drag it, and then I'm gonna actually follow it up with. I was thinking about going, 
Um, and that's because my I've I've got the day off work because my daughter uh, doesn't have kids stop that day. And for you people who you know don't have kids, um, you know I'm a little 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 envious uh, that you have free time. But um, basically, it's like uh, after school you go to kids stop so your kids can do stuff. It's like a it's like a daycare service for uh, grade schoolers um, that we pick up uh, our kids right after you know, after our work day. Um, but they have all day kids stop on days, you know, if school is closed for whatever reason, uh, and they have it select days throughout winter break. And sadly, one of the days that they're closed is the Friday before new year's, which is, I don't know, little, little infuriating, but whatever. Um, so I thought, Hey, you know, maybe Clara and I would go, uh, catch out a game. Uh, she, you know, uh, at the risk of sounding a little hoity-toity, um, you know, I brought her up into the suite level a few times, and uh, oh. she di- she didn't do well. She was bored. She wanted to leave early, which we did. <laughs> so, so I figure maybe if she's like down with the crowd, maybe follows the cheerleaders around, like she'd be get a little more, little more into it, a little more excited to stay, um, a little more active too. Um, you know, that's a bunch of the rich folk uh, up there in, in the suite level, a little stuffy up there, so. I want to be rubbing rubbing elbows with the common man, right? So, <laughs> but I I looked online and no uh, no deals for tickets. Um, they're you know still the same regular price as any regular season game, uh, and you're trying to shove that uh, price at me for a one o'clock game against the Manitoba Minotaur Moose, whatever they are. It's uh. I don't know, not happening in my opinion. And then I was like, okay, who should I reach out to about, hey, why isn't there a deal? We, we still don't have an athletic director. So it's like, it's like kind of a fumbling. Maybe they didn't even think about it because they don't have an athletic director. So I don't know. I feel like this is kind of a missed opportunity uh, that to at least get some people in there offer like yeah. $10 tickets or BOGO or something. Yeah, I can't imagine this is. Uh... This is going to be a high attendance game. I would just open the doors up and anyone that wants to come in, you want to pay for some some refreshments, go ahead. But uh, the seat's on us. Um, I mean, obviously, other than like the uh, season ticket holders, but um, they, they can they can have a reserve seat. But yeah, I would just say anyone can can come to this because I I don't expect it to be a very well attended game. Weird start time, as you said. Uh, I don't really get that. Um, now that the NCAA allows exhibition games against other D one teams, which wasn't a which wasn't a thing up until the last year or two, which kind of COVID introduced. Playing these Canadian uh, exhibition games, I, I, I'm not, I, I, like I said last week, the, the real purpose of this is just to kick some rust off, um, and the main goal is just get through the game, get, you know, get some playing time to some, some guys that don't get regular action, um, get them some action in some games that, that isn't like a, a scrimmage, you know, you some some competitive minutes, so there are there is definitely a benefit to it. But you know, I got a, I got is... a quick I got a quick hypothetical here. Sure. If if Spencer Meyer is healthy, do you play him this game? Uh, probably a couple of shifts. Sure, I think that's a decent idea because he hasn't seen the ice in a competitive context for what is it month and a half at this point? Yeah. Was it mid November? So sure, I wouldn't give him more than. I don't know, three or four shifts, maybe give them a power play opportunity, maybe penalty kill opportunity, a couple of even strength shifts. That might be the the uh, game plan for a lot of your top guys is just maybe give them, give them some special teams opportunities and then just maybe a couple of shifts of regular five on five. But you don't want to get, you don't want to risk any injury and, that's the thing with these Canadian exhibitions over the years. It, it got to be a, a situation where you're playing in a Canadian college 
teams. You know, these guys are older players, talking 25, 26 years old sometimes. These are the guys that did not play juniors, uh, not necessarily the best uh, quality players. Well, I think some and, of them also played juniors, but they just aged out. And just, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, they just went to college and kept playing. But there, there was there was some incidents of some mm-hmm. goonery going on at the end of these games, which, uh, you know, talking about suspensions of you know Bushy getting suspended for for this exhibition game, not really much you can do to suspend a Canadian college in an exhibition game for a uh, you know, cheap shot that they put on uh, one of the NCAA players in the last five minutes of a meaningless exhibition game. I almost think he, I would rather, if you're going to do an exhibition, do it against another NCAA team. You know, the problem there is you really want to face someone that's somewhat local and your options are limited there. Obviously, you're playing the Gophers next weekend. I've already played St. Thomas this year. You know, Mankato and Bemidji as well. Duluth's in your own conference. Uh, so, I mean, I guess this is... It's fine. I just... I, I, I think I would rather... Uh, schedule an exhibition game against another NCAA team because you're on the same playing field there. Like, he, Canadian team has a cheap shot, two minutes to go in the game. They don't really have any recourse there. There's no going to be effects to their team discipline wise. Whereas, if you're another NCAA team, uh, I, I think that keeps you a little bit more honest. So, that's just another goal of this game is just be mindful of the fact that there might be some headhunting. Towards the end of the game, be careful, keep your cool, uh, and uh, don't be stupid. Realize that this game doesn't matter from from a win and a loss perspective. That's just the main the, the main goal here. And obviously, get some reps, uh, kick the rust off. Next weekend's a big weekend against the Gophers, and so. Uh, I don't really care about the score here. I just want, like, like you said, I, I haven't heard anything about Meyer, um, but wouldn't be surprised if he's right around that time to, that that he's going to be back in back in action. So it would be nice to see him, you know, get a little time here in this exhibition game, see how he looks. Um, I am kind of curious about James Gray. I'm expecting him to play a bunch of this game. Just kind of interested to see what we have there, if there is any any future uh, with, with him. Um, and so just scratching the itch is some curiosity uh, with a couple of these players and and just stay healthy and, uh, yeah, and survive the game without any injuries. That's the yeah. main thing for this for this game. And hopefully My, you can get in the game. That's uh, that's the most important thing. That's the most get important thing. I want, a, I want a nice date with my daughter. And why is right. St. Cloud want to keep me from doing that? That's, that's not how you treat an alum. That's right. I mean, that's, that's <laughs> I mean, I could just pay the money, but no. Um, yeah, Spencer Byers last game was uh, November 5th against Denver. Oh, yeah. So almost two months. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, so and we really haven't heard anything uh, on that front. Uh, and at that point, it seemed like <laughs> I, I haven't, I haven't been looking that hard. I mean, I guess the rink live, but like, um, the coaches show, I think they've just kind of given up trying to do anything online with that now. Um, cause I've tried like the website or a YouTube channel or Facebook, and it's always marred with some kind of technical difficulties or, they don't have audio for a little bit or anything like that. So I just kind of gave up on that. So maybe something was said in the coaches show. If there is anything, let us know. Um, you know, I, I say we're the number one resource for Husky hockey. And here we are trying to crowdsource what's going on with Meyer, but. Well, usually Hatton's pretty good about updating on injuries uh, with his rink live stuff. I, I just, I, I can't remember reading anything about him uh, lately. And it's like I said, I, Generally keep uh, keep up with what he's reporting. So hopefully that's not going to be an injury that's going to keep him out too long. I mean, captain of this team, and obviously we've talked about how much depth this uh, defensive core has. It's not a, it hasn't been a an injury that has 
you know, cause St. Cloud to really suffer, but mm-hmm. he's a player that you really want on your team on the ice. Uh, he's a leader, natural leader. And so hopefully, hopefully we can see him soon. If not this weekend, very, very soon. Yep. Six and two without him in the lineup. So, I mean, that's still, um, pretty decent. So, yep. um, could be set, could be eight. No. So we need yeah. it back. Um, <laughs> I I don't know that, uh, that five, nothing to Miami. I mean, maybe I guess we could have used him on the penalty kill there. Maybe that could have been a little bit better, but, um, maybe he's on the ice that, uh, when, when Bushy made the hit, maybe he's the guy on the ice instead doesn't happen. And butterfly effect, um, it turns into a three to one Huskies win. Who knows? Well, I mean. And and also the next game was against Western Michigan that four to two loss, and right. I think yep. three of their four goals were on the power play. So I believe you're right. Um, yeah, I think they had um, what it was in the first period. There was two. I'm trying to remember. There were two. No, it was penalties. It was right, like back to back at the end of the first period, right? That yeah kind of buried us. And then there was the five-minute major from a coin, who we ah. haven't heard much. But maybe we'll see some uh, some of a coin this week. I would, ima- yeah, I would, I would imagine. I would imagine he's played one game since then, I believe. And I think he, I was looking at the stat sheet. He's third on the team in penalty minutes based on that major <laughs> penalty. He took fifteen minutes of penalties, penalty minutes in, in that one play. Yeah, but his only sh- his only other game was the uh, second CC game. Right. Yeah. See, uh, see if we can see a couple of you know, some more, some action from him and Rosboro and and some of these guys that you know we we normally see in a fourth line role. I'm sure we're going to see more of them in this exhibition game. It'll be interesting. Like I said, I I'm not looking too much into it. And if they were yeah. again, if they were playing another D1 NCAA team, I'd be more interested just because I'd be able to see in other teams players as well like I, there's nothing i can take from this manitoba team mm-hmm. um other than the fact that what's their nickname uh, we don't know manitoba that's the that's the winnipeg one right <laughs> um but uh it's those canadians uh we're, we're getting enough of them up in the world it's, juniors right now so it's um, it's getting bison all my, so it, it, is it the the bison is there the bison yep Really, so you just keep so going. Not a, and not even any fun alliteration with it. Like, come on, you got so many M mammals you can choose from. The man, you just wasted on bison. Ugh. Are you bison or bison? I, I, I've I heard both of those. I guess I don't know. I guess I kind of go back and forth on it. Um, but I, I, I actually should call them losers because I'm de facto, uh, my parents used to live in Brookings, South Dakota. So I'm, I'm Jackrabbit, uh, as uh, South Dakota state plays North Dakota state in the FCS championship. Oh, really? Uh, I didn't yeah. know that South Dakota state was, I mean, North Dakota state, that's like every year they're in that, but yeah, I didn't realize I it, that, uh, South Dakota state was, was doing that well this year. Yeah, South Dakota State has kind of come on the last uh, the last I don't know, five years or so, and have really. I mean, they played Iowa, and I think they lost to Iowa. That's their only loss on the season, and they lost like six to three or something like that. <laughs> I mean, it was. <laughs> I mean, obviously, say what you want about Iowa, but yeah, that's uh, still for a, a a small town or you know an FCS school to go out to a Big Ten school and and beat them or not beat them, but, and, uh, play a really close to game with well, them is North Dakota like, state did that, did that a couple of times. Well, North so Dakota state that like pretty common that they beat people. <laughs> they're, they're, I, I would put North Dakota state up against a good measure of any like FBS teams. But anyway, we're getting off track. Um, they're so, the old yeah. Saint. They're like the St. Thomas Academy of uh of that level of college football it's right. like you need to move up like you you're, you're winning too <laughs> <laughs> uh 
I was You're too good. I was talking, and now, and now, obviously, all the talk is switched over to Hermantown that they yeah. need to move up, and now it's just like, guys, aren't you exhausted at this point? Like, I get it when it like once we kind of now are shifting to insert random school who has success at a particular level that they need to move up. I think you just kind of lose the you just lose the whole point in the argument. So I'm just kind of sick of it. And it's like you can't tell me anything that. Hermantown is doing that like like they're cheating somehow because they're so good they're, at, at they're recruiting hockey. they're recruiting yeah. Come on. So. at least at the St. Thomas you know you had like the uh, private school like you know who really stands up for private schools you know yeah, exactly. and all that but the Hermantown like you don't even have that argument for mm-hmm. so yeah it's uh it, it's it's a it's a good one I imagine if we get any type of feedback from this episode, it's going to be something about bashing Hermantown. That's going to be my... <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, not bashing Hermantown. Prediction. You're not. I'm not. But somebody out there is really ticked that Hermantown is still Class A hockey. So, Well, if you uh, are that uh, person, uh, huskieshockeypodcast <laughs> at gmail.com. Love to hear from you. At more clappers. Uh, I'll frame don't it don't hold there. back, uh, Dan Jacobson. Don't hold back. <laughs> right, exactly. Um, so, and, um, you know, we can just kind of do, you know, what we wanted to do is just kind of a little fun ranking and our thoughts about every uh, stream of uh, during the, or of the NCHC teams. And just kind of go through our, our thoughts. I've got some hot takes. And some controversial ones I know, um, but I'm I'm okay. I'm gonna fight for uh, what I believe the rankings are. But um, you know, if if you want to quickly, we can uh, um, you know talk about other types of college hockey. We got uh, you know the GLI just ended with uh, Western Michigan just putting a, a stopping on both uh, Michigan Tech and Ferris State, which you know Ferris with the upset of Michigan State, which was. Uh, a big surprise, but 16 goals on the weekend. Poulin had hat tricks both games. I don't think he scored against St. Cloud State, right? So no. this is his fifth, fourth and fifth hat trick of the year, which is nuts. He's got 19 goals and 15 of those would be in games in which he had hat tricks. He also had <laughs> a two goal game. He's only had two games where he's just scored one goal. So, uh, but he had like a six game scoreless streak. Um, he's just been going in waves here. Uh, but St. Cloud kept him off the score sheet uh, when they played him in St. Cloud. And the Omaha, yeah, the Omaha and North Dakota weekends where they went, where Western went winless, uh, Poland didn't register a goal in those games either. So, and he can make it, you know, this is also the second time this year that he's scored hat tricks in back to back games. Did that in the Miami sweep that they had earlier in the season, and then obviously both games here in the GLI. You can mm-hmm. look at it. You know, it's the the Tech and Ferris F and State. You know, not great teams. Miami, not a great team. The other hat trick was against uh, uh, New, uh, Northeastern in that um, quickly rescheduled uh, Nashville uh, uh, <laughs> neutral site game. Uh, which, I mean, that's scored three goals on Devin Levi. Nothing to sneeze at there. But, you know, the, the other four games aren't the best competition. But, man, I I can't remember five hat-tricks in a season, much less the first half of a season. Someone's got to put that up. I mean, la- yeah. look that up as far as how many... What's the record for most hat-tricks in a season in college hockey? Because... You know, we had that Dryden McKay, the the shutout watch last year. That was for the career, of course. But now I'm just, I, I have no idea what that record is. I'm sure it's much more than five because like in the 80s and early 90s, scoring was just much higher. Um, you know, guys would put up 50 goal seasons. Um, so I'm sure that someone put up, I don't know, maybe like a seven or an eight hat trick season. Like what was Paul Correa? Remember his like his Hobie year? I'm sure he had a bunch of hat tricks that year, but I, I don't know. I possible that those 40, 50 goal scores, you know, spaced them out 
across the whole season too and didn't get them in such bunches that Poland is. So I don't know how to start doing that research. I, don't, I know we, we lament the uh, end of college hockey stats dot net. But uh, if that's something that someone can figure out or, or do a little research on, I'm curious because certainly in the last like 20 years, I can't think of five hat tricks, some, uh, someone having more than five hat tricks in a season. Any way you put it, very impressive for uh, Jason Pollen of Western Michigan. Uh, Korea only had 25 goals in his Hobie Baker winning season. Early. How many points? 100. <laughs> Are you kidding? Wow. <laughs> he had 75 I would have assists. Been, I would have thought it had been like 40, 60 or something like that. Because I know he had a, a huge point season. I would have figured it was a lot more goals. But, um, but yeah, but I'm, I mean, I'm I mean, curious. I totally, yeah, I totally agree. So I, I could probably find those stats and please I'll, do and get back I'll, to me. I'll try to sift through the record books and, uh, and see where we're at. But, um, you know, I, I was trying to think that there was one other surprising outcome, and now I'm drawing a blank on it. So it probably in our non-conference action. Yeah. Well, we had Clarkson beating UMass, which yeah, maybe look, that was it. Yeah, Clarkson you, beating. If UMass. you look at the uh, if you look at the uh, hair eyes rankings. Pretty big split there. I mean, that drops UMass to 15. Clarkson, with the win, is only at 42. Uh, that was in a Wisconsin's holiday tournament, that, which they're playing in Milwaukee. They've played that the last couple of years. A lot of times these Christmas, New Year's uh, uh, tournaments can have some really fluky results. Remember, like, Brown would play, our favorite team, Brown would play these these weird uh, holiday tournaments, and it seemed like they would win it every year uh, and be like, oh, wow, Brown, coming out of nowhere. Um, and then they would do nothing else for the rest of the season. So, yeah, I don't think anyone had Clarkson beating UMass in that game. And, you know, Michigan State coming into the GLI at 8, being the highest-ranked team of those four teams, they go winless in the GLI, losing to Western, or excuse me, losing to Ferris F and State, and then losing to Michigan Tech, uh, and then Western Michigan, as you said, two you know, thorough shellackings of CCHA teams, putting up eight goals in each game, moving them up to 17. So, I mean, good for the NCHC, at least, trying to get a third team in to the field here. Um, Western at 17 without their coach behind the bench, Fershweiler, mm-hmm. who's, uh, who's in Canada right now, assisting Pecknold for the U.S. team. Uh, this is kind of like Western. We, we've seen this from them, the ability to just pour on the offense. If they can have decent goaltending, which has not been consistently the case for them, they certainly are a team that can make some make some noise. I, I just don't know if I trust that back end and goaltending to um to be able to carry them. But that offense is certainly and, and that top line with with Pollen and McAllister and Sasson one heck of a line. So that was uh oh that was a result that I didn't quite see coming. I guess I didn't really think too much about making a GLI prediction, but um I guess good for uh, good for the Broncos. I did do some uh, some clarification, by the way. We were talking about the time that uh, St. Cloud was booted out of the GLI, and I was kind of unsure about the years and the timing. And I, I did I had to do some real digging here, uh, some in depth googling. But yes, I basically was right. Uh, the timing was off because of one factor that I had forgotten. So St. Cloud was going to be in the 2012 GLI, which would have been 10 years ago this week, the, tw- the 2012-2013 season. And then in March or April of 2012, that is when the Red Wings got the Winter Classic, which was going to be at Michigan Stadium. So at that time, the GLI said, hey, let's go outside for the GLI. 
And because of that, we want an all Michigan field. So that's when they said, say, oh, cloud, that's go, right. pound, go pound sand. We'll let uh, Western Michigan in. And that's when St. Cloud said, we need another opponent for that weekend. And that's why they went and got RPI to come to St. Cloud for a, a one-off series. St. Cloud did not go to RPI that, that, that year. But then you said that the outdoor GLI was the 2013 GLI. That's what screwed me up. What happened in the meantime between them announcing that was the NHL had the lockout of 2012. Uh, that's so right. they postponed the Winter Classic that Detroit was going to get. They postponed that till the next year. So they still had the 2012 GLI inside at the Joe Lewis Arena. And so St. Cloud, I guess, could have been in that. They could have re-invited them. If they were really nice about it, they could have re-invited St. Cloud back in because they weren't going outside, as it turned out. But... They had the outdoor GLI the year after. So I did, ha- I did have it all correct. I just didn't have the years uh, accurate on that. But, and I got, I got to find it again here. There was a quote from Berenson. It was like, yeah, I don't know what happened to St. Cloud. I, 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 think, that they're, I think that they wanted an all-Michigan team. And like, he was kind of playing pretty coy about the whole thing, as if he probably wasn't very instrumental in that decision. <laughs> um, which would have been, they would have, St. Cloud would have played, because we had mentioned, hadn't played Michigan in the regular season and hadn't played Michigan State in the regular season. They would have played at least one of those teams in that GLI, if not for being kicked out of that, uh, of that year. So eh, that was not, was not to be, I suppose. So, um, and yeah, that was the, uh, again, I'm bringing that back full circle because we don't have much else to talk about this weekend. <laughs> so the one time, the one and probably only time that St. Claude came close to appearing in the Great Lakes Invitational. Yeah, I'm just kind of trying to uh, kind of sift through college hockey hat tricks and I thought I would find it, but I, I haven't. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll keep trying to do a little bit more. That's a, that's your homework for this next week is figuring that out. So, um, up on the docket here, uh, coming up this next weekend, at least, um, other than obviously the high, high flying bison coming into town, um, couple of matchups that, um, you know, I'll probably kind of flip on NCHC and fall asleep to with, uh, St. Louis at or St. Lawrence at Omaha. Um, but um, any anything else? Niagara at Miami? You know, anything else kind of sticking out to you um, over the weekend? Yeah, the only, you know, Princeton at CC, um, which is the only other NCHC-related uh, action. CC will be playing those games without a couple of their players, including the goalie, Embarico, and Laba one of their leading scorers. So it'd be interesting to see if they can pick up where they left off coming off the sweep of Omaha to end their first half of the season. Have you watched uh, the little juniors? I have not well, been. Yeah. I watched a little bit. I, I was able to find um, a stream that uh, let's call it an extra legal stream. Um, uh, of uh, TSN. The Huskies broadcast. Hockey Podcast does not condone any use of illicit streams. Hey, but seriously, you, get, you bury, get it off. You bury NHL it network. on on a tier three channel. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to pay eighty bucks for like a YouTube TV package. If you would put it on like a ten dollar, like hey, you can watch this weekend or YouTube TV doesn't games. have NHL Network. Well, I'm sure there's some. <laughs> I, I'm just saying, like a just. As if it's NCHC TV, like someone offered the World Juniors as like a standalone package that I'll pay 20, 30 bucks. If you're going to give me every game of the World Juniors, I'll pay like 30, 40 bucks for it. And then I can stream it off of my regular devices. You're not giving me that option. So I have to, I I have to uh, find your workaround. I have to do some workarounds. So I was able to watch a little bit of it today, the, the, the game they played against Slovakia, which all of a sudden is like a thorn in uh, international American hockey's side 
Slovakia um, ending the uh, Olympic, dashing the Olympic dreams of, of the Americans earlier this year and, and uh, played pretty well against the Americans tonight. I mean, it's like two goals went off American defender skates and passed and then passed in Barico. So a couple of some puck luck for, for Slovakia. They had a, a nice second period though. Slovakia did, and they really did have a momentum. They were scoring, you know, what, four goals in a row uh, at one point. And uh, so a disappointing result, but at least I guess the, saving grace for the U S is that, you know, it's still in pool play. So if you have a clunker, you would rather save it for your pool play rather than the quarterfinals, the medal round, which they did in last year's juniors. And then of course, in the Olympics, as I just mentioned, so they still have the opportunity to get back off the mat here. And I think Slovakia is decent too. I don't think that's like a terrible loss. Um, and we see how you know, Canada, um, uh, Stumbled in their first game uh, against, uh, I guess they're calling it Czechia now. It's like Czechia instead of Czech Republic, I guess, is now the, the preferred name. So it's been a weird tournament. Like uh, Switzerland uh, upset, um, was it Finland the first game? Um, Switzerland's off to a 2 0 start. Um, so it's been a pretty wide open tournament so far and uh, enjoyable hockey for, for what That's I've good. seen. And uh, yeah, that's good. Yeah, for that's good. So. I, I agree. Um, Austria, not so much getting into the fun, um, losing 11 nothing, and then I think 9 nothing in their first two games. They're not not uh, quite yeah. there yet. Um, I think but, Austria um, was kind of in there as the stand in for Russia, really. That's probably true. Yeah, you, you're, you get one, one team in here uh, to replace the Russians, and not quite the quality of opponent there, but. But even Latvia gave the U.S. some fits uh, in that first game. You know, it was two to two uh, into the third period, and there was a which you know, St. Cloud commit, we, right? Yeah, I was going to say we mentioned uh, uh, Pert Peart. We'll get to that, uh, but <laughs> mentioned him, mentioned him from the uh, you know St. Cloud being represented from the U.S. side, but we failed to mention that they they have a recruit. Uh, playing in these uh, World Juniors for Latvia, and as well as Werner Mietnin, um, Vieti's brother, is for uh, playing for the for the Finns as well. So mm. two other uh, future Huskies uh, making appearances in these juniors. Which I guess I don't a hundred percent know the rules, but both of them have been like tweeted at or shouted out by the by the school's page, which I can assume that means they signed an NOI or, you know, that they will come here. Cause I thought we couldn't even say anything about them or whatnot until we actually have something in writing saying, yes, uh, I have intent to actually come here. Um, you, you might I, be right. I, 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 I am not I've learned my lesson after I've talked about how excited, excited I was that Cole Gutman was going to be coming. And, he decided to just uh, flip and then drop to to Denver, um, and the like a week before the uh, signing day. So that's why I don't get too wrapped up until they actually know that they signed. Yes, well, just for now, they are uh, committed in word or uh, yeah. Let's just treat this like the Michigan uh, scoop. It's not finalized, uh, but the wheels are in motion. Let's put it that way. There you go. That's how we break news on this on this podcast. It's <laughs> with all kinds of hedges. All kinds. And I don't uh, I, I don't I don't like to actually make uh, uh, bold statements. I like to always leave myself an out and say, eh, well, I said probably. <laughs> so, That's right. Um, yeah. So the first I, I want to say it was either the first game or maybe one of the tune up games. You know, the pronunciation game the or the pronunciation guide for USA Hockey on their line sh- said uh, P-U-H-R-T, which, which I would say is pretty definitive. Right. You can't you can't garble that. Yep. And then this last one for this last game, it was switched to P-E-E-R-T. So 
<laughs> so I USA Hockey changed their mind, I guess, on how to pronounce his name. So so I think I'm gonna go back to Peart. Because I, I look yeah, at this P-E-R-T is E R T is Peart. One syllable. Peer. That's that's how I look at it. We we've been going over this the last couple of weeks. My long and winding road as far as coming to grips with Peart. I started Peart or see, I started Peart, <laughs> then finally kind of tried to go to Peart, accepted Peart. Then you're telling me that it was Peart again. So I'm like, okay, it makes that's, that's, that's that was the original. Uh, and now again, and the the TSN guys, which I was listening to today, today, they did not get that memo because they were going full pert all the time, which I don't blame them because Neil Peer, Neil Pert is Canadian, um, so I'm sure from their Canadian and you hate Rush, so I think that's what we I don't hate Rush as well. I'm not, I'm not, I don't love Rush. Let's just put it that way. Uh, I. I Neil Peart's a good drummer, though. But so from their perspective, they're probably like, you know, he's you know Neil Neil Peart, Jack Peart. Let's uh, let's keep it in 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 house here. It's gotten me so effed up now. Uh, <laughs> I I can't like I even said Peart. Like I I've never even said that before. I I, I completely <laughs> give up at this point. I think it's just going to be Jack, and I can't screw that up. But well, I mean, we did also get a message from Jason Bryant who said it was Peart. Okay, all right. It feels so, like he it's in and I, I just don't know why it takes this long to get this sort of simple clarification. I, I'm just um yeah, I'm I'm screwed up to the point of giving up at this point. But uh he's looked alright uh so far. Um like I said the uh uh I didn't watch the uh, the first game, um, which he I believe he had an assist in that game, but um, wasn't part of the issues for for the U.S. today, uh, as far as what what I could tell. So, um, and, and he's, I thought he's looked pretty decent actually. So, um, but yes, I I am so scared of that name now because whatever I say, it's gonna be wrong. Yep, yep. Just just go with it. Whatever you do, just just go Pete Rose head first. Just dive in. I think so. I think that's so, the that's the gone best back uh, and approach. Forth, been gone back and forth uh, too much. Um. So let's switch over. Let's let's talk NCHC streams. Um. You know, we have our own little uh corner of the streaming world carved out for us. Uh, we don't have the, the big ESPN contracts or anything like that. So. We thought it'd be fun to kind of, you know, take this mid-season break. We saw most of uh, the the streams of everybody else. We're kind of well aware of them as well. Um, we also do have some new uh, arenas, too, that uh, kind of have a little bit of a different look um, over over the past few years, too. So it's been, it's, uh, I think it's time that we kind of go in and give our thoughts, give our hot takes. Maybe do a ranking. Maybe just talk about the streams. I, I don't know. What, what do you want to do with it? We, I can kind of go either way. Well, I've, I've got a one through eight. I, I don't. Just straight up. There's not eight. a. Yeah, there's not. I'm not real solid on a lot of like there there could be some movement. It's not like. Um, sure. I think my I think the number one is pretty clear. Um. Okay. Let, well, let's just get number one out of the way right now because it's probably the same for both of us. Um, and then we start at the bottom and go up. What do you think? Okay. I got North Dakota number one. Yeah, it's North Dakota. I mean, I think it's a little bit unfair with it being backed by Midco, um, which is like the Fox Sports North of the Dakotas and of, you know, uh, athletics for pretty much all of the Summit League, I would say. Maybe not all of the Summit League or missouri valley conference um but it's you know a lot of the dakotas and whatnot there are they're they're on midco they got they got just a solid overall sports package in general um you know and i, I think they just do an excellent job and obviously they've got, I, 
St. Cloud State alum with uh, Taylor Budge being ice head reporter. Right. Yeah, I don't know why we need to use their resources as a negative. I mean, they put a high quality broadcast and it shows they care. Um, when we were talking about this a few weeks ago, I said I might put Denver above them just because I hate putting UND number one in anything. <laughs> but the more I thought about it. Um, so for me, I guess we maybe we could talk about the criteria that we use here. Obviously, you got picture and you got audio, kind of your main. I guess there can be some intangibles, too, that you want to. I've list uh, mine is based out of a lot of intangibles, and right, I think well, I'm going to drive a I'm, lot I'm glad, of people nuts. With well, it. I'm really intrigued about that. Uh, but for UND, uh, I think that the the and for me, the video quality is number one. Like I can always mm-hmm. mute the the sound, and I do sometimes <laughs> mute the sound, but you can't. If I'm going to be t- tuning into N- NCHD TV, yeah, I can't you, block. I can't block the screen. You know what yeah. I mean? Like you used to so, hook up uh, KVSC and uh, we watch could the game still that do way. that. Yeah. Got to be a little uh, out of sync um, situation. God, I, I mean, if Blake Tyson can do the play by play for my entire life, <laughs> much less like uh, hockey games, um, sign me up. I don't know where he is now. We should. We should see where what he's up to. Reach out. Hopefully should we try getting, and interview him? Yeah. Hopefully he's <laughs> getting paid to uh, to announce hockey games because he was a natural at it. But uh, yeah, yeah, I wish I could do that more often. And that's one thing I'd like to. I'd like the NCHC TV if there would be a functionality of being able to choose multiple um, audio feeds for the games. Something that I know, like MLB TV, which I also have, you have the you have the ability to change the audio feed. Base they all, they'll they offer like the uh, the two different TV streams, their announcers, and then also the, their radio feeds. Obviously, that's you know major league, big time, lots of resources, and we're talking the NCHC's a drop in the bucket compared to that. But a guy can dream. Um, so I'm trying to use these main criteria. The UND's video feed, I think, is close to pristine. Yeah. Um, like you said, it's it's on a par with with a Fox Sports or well, Bally Sports um, type. Oh yeah. Uh, quality broadcast. And I do. I actually don't mind the announcers. Um, who we saw a little bit more with. You know, they they did all the action or most of it at least during the Omaha pod. And I think that during that month uh, or so of games, they were, they showed an ability to call, not just North Dakota games. And I thought, I I think they have a decent amount of knowledge. And uh, I think that play play by play guy is, is solid. Uh, He's obviously the, the main guy they have for CBS sports network games now. Uh, and, uh, it's a Jake Brandt. I think that's the, uh, color guy. He's got a, uh, an amusing, um, upper Midwest. Um, oh yeah, he's, I do like <laughs> right. the accent. It reminds me of home. Um, so, uh, and, the, but I don't, I, I feel like they're, they're definitely biased, but they, they're not obnoxious when it comes to that. So um, they play to um, their own home crowd, which, which expect. they should. Yeah. But they're not sort of over the top with that, and and they're still objective. Like if they're, you know, if North Dakota is not playing well, they'll they're not going to shy away from, they're not going to sugarcoat it, I guess. Yep. So now, yeah, like I know you're talking about their knowledge and everything like that. I like overall what I want overall the change in the production of hockey in general. Here, here's here's what I want. I want a take a message from the Big Ten and go to twelve minute intermissions. I think like watching the Big Ten games and just seeing how quickly those intermissions fly by. Um, you know, it's only three minutes, I know, but God, twelve minute intermissions is so much quicker, and it just feels so much, you know, that you're more engaged and just back right into the action. I think the NCAA you just got to tell you just got to tell the teams to pick it up too, or unless you're you'll be called for that uh, late uh, on the ice uh, delay a game penalty. Exactly. Exactly. 
And then overall, across the board, every hockey production in existence, I would be so thrilled if we get rid of the intermission interviews. I have never had any revelation about an interview that a player made during an intermission. The questions are absolute garbage. The answers are absolute garbage. Like there is, it's, it's just literally a waste of your, you have a commercial, you have this little clip of somebody saying, Hey, what, uh, what are you trying to do here in the third period? And then they come back with, oh, you know, we got to get back to our game. You know, uh, get pucks down low and uh, create some chances. Like, I didn't learn anything. And then they go back to commercial. I didn't learn anything. We don't need it. It's stupid. We need to just get rid of all intermission interviews. Top to bottom. Doesn't matter what sport. Or it doesn't matter what level. NHL, it's terrible. College hockey, it's terrible. Just get rid of them. Any difference between like player versus coach interview? Does coach interview do anything for you? No, no. It, it's because it's, I, I think it's also because the questions are just kind of just softball and lame. Uh, yeah, the, and, and it's always, it's always these talk about questions, which if you listen, it's always, you know, to talk about, you know, that shift by fill in the blank there. Oh yeah. He really worked hard and created some good chances and we hope to see more of that. Thanks. Cool. I learned a lot. That was interesting. <laughs> like, just, if, no. if any listeners are curious as to why we don't do more interviews with, uh, <laughs> with people, um, it's probably a couple of these, um, these options. I would probably turn into, it, it would turn Farley. into an episode of the Chris Farley show. <laughs> it's like, Rem- like remember that uh, penalty <laughs> shot against BU? <laughs> like, oh, wow. Wow, that was that pretty was, cool. <laughs> um, speaking of that, uh, you know, I want to go back to about 15 minutes ago when you talked about the long and winding road. Um, do you have a favorite Beatles album? Yeah, the my favorite. Don't, why I was I, I'm the don't biggest... say Beatles one. Don't say Beatles. No, one. No, 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 I no, already no. have. Okay. My Beatles fandom really consists of their last five albums. So the 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 five albums they did after they stopped touring. Um, which I know excludes Rubber Soul and Revolver, which I've be I've come to like those, love those even in retrospect. Mm-hmm. I so we're we're talking Sergeant Pepper, Sergeant Pepper. Magic, Magical Mystery Tour, um, Abbey Road, Abbey Road. Um, Let It Be, and the White Album. Of those five, I'd say Abbey Road is my favorite, or Sergeant Pepper. I'd say probably those two. Um, I like all five of those, like to the bottom of my heart. Um, the Beatles are my favorite, favorite, my, my first favorite band. Mm -hmm. So, but the long and winding road is not one of my favorite Beatles songs. Um, and let it be, although I love it, it's probably number five of those five albums. What, what, what about you? No, I'm a big, I'm a big rubber soul fan. That's, uh, uh, that, that, that's no, I get I would it. Say it's my, yeah, it is my favorite. So, but uh, I don't, I don't know why I thought about that. I don't know why I wanted to come back to it, but it was just kind of one of those things. I was like, hey, I wanted to ask about that, and I also wanted to ask uh, if you watched uh, the Knives Out one. But I, then I remembered you don't have Netflix, so you didn't watch the new. Knives Not the Out. new one. Wait. I I've seen the the old one or the first one, but yeah. um, and I'll probably see the second. I remember enjoying the first one. Um, Glass Onion. The, the, the you're talking the the second yep. one. Mm-hmm. So. which through they named it after the after a Beatles song which yes does <laughs> strike me as intriguing so but there's it's like a whole uh, there's a really a whole funny cast there's uh, except for Daniel Craig is uh, right, right right yeah right. and I I really enjoyed it but there's a really funny part where um they do have a Beatles reference so it's oh, good. so it's played because they did name it after the song that's not just a coincidence um, I don't know the context of the song. It's not on Rubber Soul, so it's on the White Album. It's not. Yeah. I mean, it's not one of their even well-known songs off the White Album. It's a fairly obscure song, but so UND number one, <laughs> number eight. 
Let's go. Let's let's go eight, and then on up. Although you did mention about Denver, I I don't know if I want to say my Denver point right now. Is well, that sure. I had number well, two. Okay. Um. I I like it when they're on altitude, <laughs> but it's it's like the second game. You usually the Friday game is on altitude, which I think is incredibly good. But like the second game sometimes is not on altitude, and it's just kind of that regular and then i think that one drops it down a couple spots i don't think that feed is any special that was that was part of my issue as well as far as there's an inconsistency there i think even mm-hmm. with the play-by-play announcer i think yep. it's different um oh uh I, yeah, blake the, blake by the way is doing play-by-play for the dubuque fighting saints oh really oh great who oh. st cloud lost a commit that plays for dubuque Max Montez is no longer committed to St. Cloud State. No, 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 no. That's not what we want here. Uh, well, but, I mean, um, there's two sides of the story. Maybe we don't want him here. Who knows? That's right. Yep. And, you know, it's hopefully Blake didn't uh, didn't dissuade him from his. Uh, oh man, admit. how about that for a heel turn, Blake? <laughs> Blake does a about face and starts spurning St. Cloud. And, oh, it's a wrestling talking, story. Talking right smack there. about Val's. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, not the way that it's supposed to go. Yeah, so Denver, yeah, the, they have this one guy. I think his first name is Tyler is their um, play-by-play guy, who I think is good. And then I think the color guy is the same for both games. At least it's this Charlie Post, who's actually from St. Cloud, um, who I think is decent. Um, so I think their their announcers are fine. And like I said, their video is good. I mean, it's there's nothing that I, I don't, other than the the poor lighting in the air in the corners at Magnus, which the TV <laughs> side doesn't really have anything to do with. Yeah. Um, I think their video is, is good and their announcers are good. Except there just is a, a, an inconsistency with, I don't know which announcer I'm getting. And because of that, it's like, it does not get down a, a peg. Yeah. Um, I can in good faith, put it at ahead of UND. No, no, I agree. So, all right. Who do you have as last? Because this is going to be my most controversial one, I think. There were definitely a couple of candidates. I did put Omaha last. You did? Um, Wow. Okay. I thought that, I thought we were going to, I thought you were going to do Miami last. I have, I have Miami seventh. (laughs) We probably have like the same exact list. Yeah, we might. Um, We seem seem to always do this. Like when we're like, oh, let's both come up with a list and it's exactly the same. I thought my I, mean, I thought me having Omaha last was going to be like a big because I think their picture is really good. But I, that no, that's that's the that's the X factor for me for dropping as much as it did. If we were done this list like 3 or 4 years ago, it would not have been last because I feel like the video quality has fallen off a cliff in Omaha to the point where it's it's not good it like there's a contrast issue where it's like way too bright. And I, I, I feel like I can't Omaha even games this year. I feel like I can't even see the puck a lot of the times because the ice is just too over contrasted. And then their audio issue. I'm not I'm not going to say a word about the Omaha <laughs> announcer. I know I've beaten him up on this podcast before. I'm even going to say I heard Wes Walls say one, three, one, four check the other day. So this Omaha guy <laughs> is not the only one that says that. Um, and I'm not, that's, that's not even factoring into any of this, but their quality of their audio is absolute dog doo-doo, um, because it's, it's like tunneled in through an aluminum can, very tinny and metallic, and I'm just throwing out metal and iron related words. It sounds that's the, awful. That's the radio feed, right? It's a radio feed, which... You'll see, like, a lot of the ones in the bottom half here, they're kind of superimposing yeah. their radio of, feed on their uh, video feed. And one of my and, friends, Garen, pointed that out as well. Garen pointed out she did a really good job of being like, hey, like, like having that radio feed over, like, the, the audio in, or over the video of seeing it, first off, obviously, it's too completely different type of play by play when you have to describe to somebody not watching versus um it going on but also just just the sound quality like you said it's just it, it's not pleasing to the ears at all 
But even I think like Miami's and Westerns aren't as broken as the Omaha one. And I remember to Omaha last year, the St. Cloud series that uh, they played Omaha in Omaha, the camera was struggling to keep up with the puck. It was sometimes in the wrong zone at some points. The uh, the video quality, which again I remember the beginning of the conference, you know, eight eight years ago or so, I would put it probably in the top half of the conference. It's just I I don't know what exactly the issue is, um, but it's really fallen off, and and because the video feed is not. I don't think as good as it used to be. Then you couple that in with annoying announcers and then also poor quality of audio. There is no, there is really no plus here. Like, whereas like Miami actually don't mind the quality of the the announcers. I think their announcers are okay. And, And so that, that alone puts them above Omaha, even though I would probably say, Omaha's video is a little bit better than Miami's. Um, but it's just, there's not, there's not any aspect where I'm giving a thumbs up when it comes to Omaha, uh, w- when it comes to their streams. The one thing I like about, or well, with, with Omaha, at least I can, I don't really have a lot of trouble following the puck if we've got the contrast correct, which like you said, is, can be kind of streaky. I'm, I remember watching a little bit of the, Western Michigan game and it looks dark at times where other times it looks way too bright and you can't even see like the face off circles and whatnot. And that's all, obviously that's also really bad with Duluth. I think Duluth gets that pretty bad as well that you can't really see the lines. Um, but I really hate Omaha. First off, any time that a penalty is ended, they cut the camera to the guy stepping out of the penalty box and it boggles my effing mind every time that they choose to do that. And I get it. Like, I I think even they just pump it in from the scoreboard. So it's just the scoreboard feed that is being played out. And it's like, even if that's the case, why do you making the conscious decision of, Hey, the play is over down in this end. Let's go ahead and look at this guy stepping out of the penalty box for three seconds. And the way their arena is set up, if an Omaha is on the penalty, he just turns around and goes right to his bench anyway. So it's not like there's anything exciting going on with whatever's happening there. But you're literally taking away from, like, I'm trying to think of a different sport analogy. And the only thing I could think of is that imagine you're watching a football game and right at the snap, the quarterback takes a step back and then you cut to the free safety. For two seconds. And then all of a sudden you cut back. Like, what is going on? What are you doing? That like they're nowhere near the plane. This is stupid. Um, and then like I said about their benches, their benches is being on opposite sides of the rink is just stupid. I hate it. I hate how that looks on TV. I hate that how that looks in general. And for it being a new arena, having that choice, I think is just kind of mind boggling to me. Really hate it. See, these are the uh, intangibles. These are, yeah, these are the intangible side. And sides when you're talking thing. about, like, because I'm sure the feed, the video feed is what they're getting, on, what, is what they project on their, their Jumbotron. Mm-hmm. Um, but right there, like, you're, you're, just, you're just being lazy at that point. You, you, you don't care enough to give a dedicated uh, stream to TV viewers, you're just going to hook it up to the same feed that you're giving the in-house customers. This isn't something that UND would do. This isn't something that Denver would think that their customers would appreciate, their streaming customers would appreciate. It's just, yeah, let's just slap it together. Same with their audio. So they will just layer this on top of the, uh, cra- the, the we'll layer the crappy audio on top of the crappy video and just, you know, slap it together and here you go. Uh, enjoy. Uh, it, it doesn't, it's not a product that's delivered with love. Uh, and that's what, uh, that's, what's frustrating, uh, about Omaha, about Omaha's stream. I, I just picked a random game. So I just looked at that Western Michigan game and I'm just kind of clicking around and yeah, that just clicking around on that timeline. There is just a, Big difference 
in just random times about how the picture quality because i think like motion wise it's good but just like it's it's too bright or too dark and it just there doesn't seem to be any balance with it i'm sure there's games that it's better and, and games that it's worse but what seems which is part of the, the last couple of years yeah the last couple of years when i've checked in it's not been good. They, I wish they, I wish we could have a full archive of NCHT TV. Cause you can't go back to previous years, as far as I can tell. But I remember last year, the, the St. Cloud series there was a disaster when it comes to... Maybe I can look back on our old podcast, because I'm sure I mentioned it there, as far as, boy, this broadcast sucks. Um, but, uh, it, yeah, it's um, frustrating, because, like I said, it used to be pretty good. Um, but I don't know what the, uh, I don't know what the issue is. Uh, maybe it's, I, I don't know, maybe it's the, um, maybe now I'm thinking about from last year, I think it might be a, like largely student run, which might be an issue, but I don't think that's an excuse either because look at St. Cloud's video feed, which I think is pretty good, actually. Maybe we can uh, transition in talking about St. Cloud, where you'd put them in this ranking. I have them third. Um, I have them too. We I have them above the Denver. Same, we're gonna have the same exact one. I, you, oh, I you have, have them. Oh, you have them at two. I thought you said at you two. had them there too. Okay. No. Yeah, I have them third. I, I, I have That's... them above Denver just because it's consistency. My problem with St. Cloud um, has to do with a. I don't like. I don't want to say their graphics, but like when they have the starting lineups and it just lists the players. That's incredibly lazy. Don't do that. Um, and then also when they have like power play percentages, like they'll say, you know, oh, for, you know, in the game over two, zero percent penalty kill for the other team, two for two, 100 percent. And it's like, nobody does that. Why are you giving me the inverse? It's like, of course, we know if one is over two, the other one's going to be two for two. You don't need to do that. And then they, it, it it flips by so quickly, so it's like it's like one second of one stat, one second of the other stat, and it's like just give me two seconds of the one set that matters of how successful they are right so far in this game. Yeah, look sometimes for that next the, time. Yeah, that annoys. Sometimes me. those those graphics can have some some mix ups. Like they they mentioned uh, they had some stat was in the North Dakota series where. It was, the first time that something had happened in a Huskies hockey game since June of whatever year. Uh, it's like, I don't think the Huskies hockey <laughs> team was playing in June yeah. uh, of, of any year. Um, and, and, and some of that, obviously, we can chalk up to, like you said, them being students. Yeah, which and, I, that's fine. And that, I, I, I'm not really all that concerned about that. My main thing with, with putting them three instead of two is I, I'm just not a fan of Jim Rich. And I'm not much of a fan of of Gino Parrish. I, when it comes to the biased, they cloud that too. No pun intended. They 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 get that clouded too much uh, with objectivity. The thing like with Blake Tyson, you know, one way to to really capture my heart um, is say say the words: the Huskies aren't playing real well right now. Um, and I remember when I tuned in to, it was when they were playing Mankato last year, um, the Mankato announcer was, was terrible. So I'm like, this isn't working for me. So Mm -hmm. I, that's when I, that's when I checked out KVSC and Tyson. And I can't remember his, uh, it was a Jake something. Um, whoever his partner was, uh, they're all like, you know, Hey, Husky's just, uh, it's, it's just not working for him right now. They need to, they need to do this. They need to do that. And and uh, that goes a long way with me because that 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 shows me that I'm going to I'm going to much more trust you um, going forward as far as when you're calling the action. Um, I can trust you to know whether or not you think that this team is playing well or if they have if they're hey, if they're down two goals, but you think that they're playing well. OK, well, maybe that means that they have a chance to come back. It's just those kind of like little small trust things go a long way. Whereas I think Rich and, and Parrish just, they almost feel like their audience can't take them saying that the Huskies aren't playing well. It's almost as they, they feel like we're so fragile. Like we can't believe that the Huskies are playing poorly. 
And so it's, and th- it, that's a school of announcing. Like I would th- say like the CC announcers fall into this as well, where they're just so afraid of saying a bad word about their home team. It's just, I don't know. It's, it's not uncommon. It's just, I'm getting really tired of it. Uh, and so again, I can live with uh, announcers that I don't care for as long as the video quality is good. And that's why I do like, I do think that the St. Cloud video feed is above average. And that's, that's yep. why I am putting them in the top half. The, the only thing that otherwise irks me is that their replays are, they don't get the best replays at times. It's like, <laughs> It's not what we wanted to look at or, you know, go back maybe uh, two more seconds. I think we would have had it, but you missed the whole play beforehand. But again, that's uh, about being students and learning. And, you know, these students also in this program end up going to TV at pick a station. I mean, they're all over the place. And there's a reason why St. Cloud and mass communications and UTVS and whatnot they win so many awards. They win so many local Emmys, and that's um, it's a big testament to it. And I think which you know when you're talking about these these worthless player interviews, which I agree are 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 worthless. I, I guess I'm not as worked up about it as I you hate are. Him. Uh, I hate him so much, and maybe because the, it's just the, too the, much. The Kevin only reason Gorg has really just hurt me because <sighs> every one of well, there's plenty just... of there's plenty of reasons to be irked by by the gorgster but um not gonna lie though but... he did he did win me 80 bucks kevin gorg he what, was uh, you take I... a canterbury tip from him yeah or? yeah he i took a canterbury tip he from knows him. he knows his ponies he, yep and uh i was i was listening or i was because he he does the you know announcing before the races um you know that's piped in throughout all of Canterbury Park and whatnot, and he was talking about this one horse. He's like, "Watch out for this, this horse." They started out at four to one, now pushed back all the way to nine to one. I think this is going to be a good horse to watch. And I was like, "All right, boom!" And then they kept hit. I think I put like ten bucks on him, and so, um, so yeah, I was able to. So I, I guess I can't well, hit him good. too much. Yeah, yeah, you could have. Unless you could have he does won, a... You could have won hundreds, hundreds, of, of hundreds of <laughs> of dollars if you would have played your your cards right. Uh, but uh, no, I think the main reason it, the, I the didn't trust Kevin Gorg those... that much. I think that was my issue. <laughs> I got to think the main reason for these player interviews is for the sideline reporter to get experience. It's more about them. You're... Right? You, you want to know so. another hot take? What, what's that? Get rid of the sideline reporters. <laughs> I'm trying to play devil's advocate here. It's like, that's really the main uh, reason is we don't really care. There, You can see, like, so I'm not saying this about the St. Cloud. Uh, they've never done this. But sometimes the sideline reporter doesn't even care what the person says <laughs> that they're interviewing. They're just saying the question and then they give it, give the microphone over and then it's just say, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay. And then you go into like question number two and it is basically exactly what they just said. They obviously clearly weren't hearing or listening. Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's, uh, yeah, it's, you're, like, you're going I lo- through I the love motions. Sideline, like, what? I love the sideline reporters when they're like, Hey, we got to go down to fill in the blank. Um, on the blank sideline and like during football games, I'm like, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Just got like when they're actually giving updates about what's happening on the sideline, I think they're awesome. But when they're actually sitting there interviewing a coach as they're running to the halftime locker room, it's just a garbage fluff interview and we should stop it. I I, I think that we just, we may, maybe we've got to change it up. Like instead of the same tired pablum, of, you know, what do you need to do in the third period here? Just, you know, be like, hey, it's it's often said that The Godfather Part 2 is better than the original Godfather. <laughs> What's your take on Godfather 3? <laughs> and just go on and on that. Like, just get to you know think... these guys a little bit better. What that are your way. thoughts about Pacino winning for Scent of a Woman? <laughs> <laughs> there, there, we, there we go. I think just throw we, them in. Well, we, we would have to give them a little bit more up-to-date <laughs> references because these players weren't alive when Scent of a Woman was released. But you get the drift. 
you know. What's your favorite T Swift song? Homie? You What's your favorite track off of Midnight's? TikTok star? Uh, for me, it's yes. Question. Just, just in case you're curious. I like Question is my favorite. But off of Midnight's? I, I, will, I will not question that. <laughs> Normally, I would insert like a little bit of questions, but I don't. I'm, you know, I, I we know don't, we don't, I don't have the. Uh, we, we don't have T Swift money, so I'm not <laughs> able to do that. Um, okay, where were we? We're, we're talking about Saint Cloud's feet. We're all over the map here. I, uh, so, yeah, what a, what I guess I'll we? just. I'm just gonna say four through seven, and then you can say yours. I mean, again, these these I don't really have. I can move them. Um, I can move them kind of, uh, I'm not really set in stone with these sure. four, but roughly. So I got U- UND at one, Denver, SESU, CC at four. And, and I think like these three, I think are, are your top three. And I think these, those three yeah, are kind I, of yeah. the ones that like, then there's a drop upper off. echelon. Like these are the streams to watch. Um, then CC. I, and I do agree with you, and I do agree with you. Obviously, Jim Rich. Obviously, overtime is his Achilles heel as well. Um, it's you know I was listening to like some because I was putting together on Twitter just of previous Husky hockey goals, and just listening to some of the you know announcer you know back when like Doyle was doing color commentary and whatnot, and I was just I was just I was, I was like. Ah, I kind of miss some of those announcers. I thought they were a little more. Um... Well, if if St. Cloud's, they're you know it's an entirely student run broadcast, and they always say like Parrish and Rich will say we're the only ones that aren't students. I would just put like if we have guys like Tyson come coming through that program, just put him and whoever else on that stream. Have the whole thing be a student broadcast. Why not? Go for it. If you're don't do this half measure kind of thing. Go for it. Put all the, put students in the in yeah. the broadcast. Booth. The Alaska Ooh. goal that I put in where Nala- when right. we, we scored against Those Alaska were point one. Yeah, that that was the KVSC feed. Um, right. that's okay. on that clip, and that's Aaron Bjorkstrand, who was a college buddy okay. of mine. Okay, he he he, he was a lot of fun he too. He's great. He, yeah. he did the women's games too. So it, I mean, it, it was a lot of fun. He was he was a good guy. He took his Halo yeah. very seriously back in the day too. I wonder <laughs> if he still does. <sighs> Good. Yeah, that's what that's what I'd say. Just go full student broadcast. That's that's my that's my soapbox for today. But uh gotcha. All right, four through seven. So yeah, so I'd CC UMD, Western Michigan, and then Miami. Okay. And obviously Om- Omaha at eight. With CC, that's another one like Denver where it can depend. Like they've they've had that they've had the TV crew. Um like for the St. Cloud series, it was on the Friday night. They had just a, a TV commentator and, and color guy. I couldn't tell you their names. And then the Saturday game, they they piped in their radio guy, who actually yeah. I like. This Ken Landau, he's been doing their games for a while, who I think is a pretty good radio guy. Um, but it's that inconsistency. And last year, I believe when they did the um, when they did just the uh, patching the the radio broadcast onto the video i thought or maybe it was when they were doing still at their old building the quality of the video from those would be much less than if they were to do an in-house video stream i feel like they've patched that up maybe it's just since they've moved into the new building so i'm putting it at four because i'm at least guaranteed a good video stream Mm-hmm. And I like Landau as, as an announcer. The the two TV guys, like I said, I, I kind of, they're, they're even more sort of hesitant to say anything uh, bad about their team than, than Rich and Parrish are. Uh, they're just very vanilla. Like the fact that I, I don't even know what their names are, it, it tells you like I just, they're sort of devoid of any sort of flair or unique character. But they got a decent video feed, and I don't tend to miss the puck at all. So, which I can't always say with UMD, and at yeah, least you, at least UMD's yeah. into HD, which you know hadn't been the case for a while. 
But their video is not great. Their announcers, the, the one color guy they have is really unpleasant. Um, it's like an entitled, like when any, anything call goes against Duluth, it's just, oh, this is just the worst call of all time. It's very sort of annoying, um, elitist, uh, I think. Although I will shout them out, they need to, their graphics people need to be in contact with the uh, Huskies uh, people because in that series against Denver, when both those games went to overtime, they had a, they had a screen, uh, a little visual there with all of the overtime implications, you know, two points for an overtime win, one for an overtime loss on a three on three doesn't count or, uh, and then shootout does not count in uh pairwise had it all laid out there. Someone needs to give that graphic to Jim Rich because uh, <laughs> that was perfectly laid out. It was just like, I, was, I saw that. And I'm like, this is just perfect. We need this uh, in the St. Cloud, in the St. Cloud booth. But um, that's what I'll, um, that's, I guess, what separates CC and UMD, just a little bit more consistency with the video feed. And yeah, the, uh, the audio not doing a ton for me in either case. Although there and there are some Duluth color guys that are better. That I don't know what this this guy is. Guy's bald sort of cue ball guy. Judd maybe is his name. Um, not a fan of him. Uh, but they've had some other guys in his place who are, aren't as obnoxious as 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 he is. So maybe he's not the everyday color guy. But uh, he he's hard to listen to at some points. Um, what, what what are your thoughts maybe on those two teams? Um, I actually have, I have Duluth at six and the reason why I have Duluth, uh, farther down is because I, I feel like they don't track the puck very well. Um, it, it can be hard to watch, especially like, you know, their one color commentator, like you said, that one always just sticks out into my mind. I think he was a former player. Um, oh, sure. And so it's just like. I remember that, you know, and this was even a few years ago, but he just kind of kept jumping and was like, well, why wasn't that a penalty on yeah. St. Cloud State? Like, it was always just like this, well, if they're going to do... I'm like, this gr- like, grievance against, yeah. uh, like, what, do you want a fourth national title here? <laughs> so, and... But also, I think also like the color with that too, with the, the feed can be, you know, way off where, you know, I'm not able to see the puck even if the camera was following it and it's, you know, so I get really frustrated watching them. Uh, I have Miami at seven just because if it's not in the neutral zone, I can't see the play. It's it, like, yeah, it's bad. Cause it's you got bad. this fish eye thing. Once, once you cross the blue line that you, you can't see at absolutely anything. And that gets, that obviously gets annoying. Um, so you have yeah. Western, where'd you have, do you have CC at four? I have CC at four, yeah. Um, and then you have West, Western and then at Western. five. Those are, no, I have Western at four, sorry, and CC at five. Okay. I feel like Western's video feed isn't as good it's as not. CC's. It's not, but I do like their announcers a little bit better. And those, those are the radio guys, same as Miami. Yep, they're just doing the radio feed on top of the video feed, and I I think both of those announcers are fine. Like I I like the Miami announcers; they they get it. As far as Miami's been pretty bad <laughs> lately, and they don't lie about that kind of stuff. They don't, you know, they don't uh, you know revel in that, but they're realistic in the fact that this program's kind of fallen off a little bit. And so I, I appreciate that. So it's an honesty aspect that I, that I appreciate. Um, but one thing I really like about Western Michigan's camera and whatnot is that I think it's so like, I like being that close, but I'm still able to really see anything, but I get a better sense of how fast the game is moving. Um, and that's kind of what jumped it a little bit ahead. Um, I do feel those who are really close. So I think you kind of have it as three tiers, in my opinion. You've got North Dakota, St. Cloud, and Denver in the top tier. You've got Western Michigan CC kind of in the middle. And I think you have Duluth, Miami, and Omaha. And I think those are kind of your three main tiers, in my opinion. So if you 
if you feel like four through seven is a little bit more your style of a tier, I'm not going to necessarily debate you on it. I still think that there's. I would just put Western. I guess I guess we're differing the most with with Western Western. I I I just I feel like I I lose the puck with their video a little bit too much. Um, I don't mind their announcers, but and it's not as bad as Miami when it comes to being able to see the puck. But there is there is a, a difficulty I I feel, uh, and and it it's not you don't really get like a variance of it's it's not like the Omaha where you got to zoom in on the on the uh, penalty box when the penalty is over. But there's like no zooming in at all at some points where there it could be uh, or like changing of a camera angle. It's just basically just the one camera they have, really. And I I don't really know if they do much of like replays either. So for Western, although I guess I guess I have. I mean, I haven't listened. Like, I haven't watched like a full Western game for a while because Saint Cloud isn't hasn't played there this year. Sure, and won't play there this year. So I guess like maybe it's been a little different this year. I've watched a little bit of their games, but from what I can gather, I just I don't remember there being a ton of variance in their uh in their video stream as far as they like like, as far as when plays when plays are going and whatnot yeah you do have it's kind of a stationary cam that kind of pans back and forth but i think the fact that you're so close makes it a little bit easier to see it on the ends of the ice versus miami where it feels like you're trying to watch from mars uh where yes yeah no it's certainly better than miami but, um, but, but like for replays and whatnot, I think they actually do a really good job is because they do have cameras that are, I don't know, I guess kind of above the face off dots in each zone. So it kind of gives you like, if there's something that play that happens, you know, they switch to a different camera angle that focuses on that zone. And I think that's, I think they do a really good job with their replays. And I do think their there- stream quality is pretty good. Is that the one where they can't really do great uh, overhead angles of the goal for like review situations because Lawson is so old that they, I remember like the angle was tilted, like the crossbar of the net doesn't line up to the, the goal line because of the angle of the camera. So when they were doing like overhead reviews, You'd be like, oh, that clearly crossed the line, but it, it it's like an optical illusion. I remember this happening like the first couple of years. I think they've changed I think they've changed the position of the overhead, but they, it's they one of those things down. where it's such a such a uh, old facility that they just didn't have a ton of like the modern amenities or at least for like for like the CBS games, I think. Maybe that, where would you like so we got a CBS Sports Network. Uh, where would you put them in this list if you're gonna slot them in? If if I were to sl- okay, so if I'm slotting them in, um, yeah, I would probably put them at number one or two. Like I really yeah, it'd be like hard not mid- to. I mean, it's it's hard not to. Um, just the the one but- downside of CBS Sports Network is that it's CBS Sports Network and it's yeah. not. Talk about burying TV. hockey. I mean, it's <laughs> right, and and paying for cable for what? I mean, they're only doing like ten games now or so. I mean, yeah, and then they'll do the uh, frozen face off. But for someone like you who goes to the frozen face off, that really doesn't. You know, mm-hmm. You're not going to watch those games on TV anyway. It's just a hard sell to commit to paying for you know couple of months of cable for so few games i I wish they would either be able to and and then not only that but or you know that a majority of those games are going to be pushed back because you're going to have temple versus akron going into a double overtime so you're going to miss the first 10 minutes of your hockey game yeah i mean i i would assume that it's good for the league you know i'm sure the schools get a cut of a cut of the money that CBS is throwing them. So I'm not saying that they should not be on CBS sports network, uh, but it's just, I don't know. It's uh, it, it could be better. Um, but I do you know, say, I do really like Ben Holden as 
play by play. I think he's even chronically underutilized. Well, he's not there anymore, is yeah. he? I mean, because well, this yeah, uh, Heiner even, from North Dakota was doing the yeah, games last year. Yeah, but even now, he's on Big Ten and ESPN. Oh, that's now, right. But he, um, even that, I think he's underutilized in those roles. I mean, I think he he could he should be put on more hockey duty in ESPN. Yeah, I like I like him a lot. So, um, what's your uh, and, and what's like? Your... I think he should be doing. I think he should be doing the Frozen Four. Um, I, I think <laughs> well, and there would be. Uh, I mean, fill in the blank. Legion it's better than of of uh, possibilities that would be an upgrade from yeah. the current situation. What's your uh, What's your take on the Starman? I. <laughs> I don't know if, <laughs> how much I want to get into Starman. I, because well, now, now like, you do have to get into it. No, no. Because what my issue with him isn't anything that's sports related, which is it's because I follow him on Twitter and how much he hates bike lanes. <laughs> <laughs> And it's so weird that he keeps retweeting this anti bike lane like that has like 300 followers that apparently New York City is putting in bike lanes. And this one advocacy group is really against bike lanes and he'll tweet about um, and congestion pricing and like he's not for that either. And it's just like. Oh, this is kind of a this is kind of a twist here, Star Man, that you don't you don't care for for bike lanes. That's that's interesting. <laughs> that, that's yeah, really my only that's issue. That's one of with those Starman. yeah one of those intangibles uh, yeah. that we were mentioning. Um, that, uh, as, as far as his play by or his uh, commentary is, I I like him and I get why people don't. Um. But I feel like he doesn't necessarily talk down to you. And there are actually times when I watch a game and he says something, I'm like, oh, that's a good point. Or that he points out something that I didn't really notice, which usually color commentators don't do. It's uh, like I, I, I see it. <laughs> so but um, I I do feel like he does get a little jump happy, um, you know, kind of getting into it. But I think. That's where Holden and Starman, I think, were so good because they had that rapport together so well. Yeah. Um, whereas I think if you're not used to that, um, I think that com- that duo can kind of fall. Yeah, I've mostly been pro Starman. I, I mean, he's obviously very knowledgeable. Just ask him. Um, <laughs> he's been around the block. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I've when it was during the NCHC pod where I felt I was getting a little tired of him. Like he was almost becoming Pierre Maguire ish in terms of just, you know, this guy played juniors here. And then I coached his dad and juniors in the late nineties and going off on the family tree of all the connections that he's made in his world and his career of hockey. And so I think I'm more like, I like him in small doses. I just can't, I can't have him be my like favorite team's color guy where I would have to hear him on a day by, you know, on a daily basis. But in the, in the sense of, you know, if he's the CBS guy and he's going to be doing the games every, well, like once a week or every other week, I think that's a good quotient of star man for me. So I like him. I, I don't love him, but, uh, and I guess, um, I guess the bikers and him don't like him. Uh, but, uh, maybe we should pitch in and give them a bike. Like that'd be like a nice <laughs> troll gift. Like everyone right. pitch in and give them like a used Schwinn. Let's be like, here you go. Navigate those new yeah. bike lanes those in the big apple. bike lanes for you. <laughs> I'm, I'm scrolling through his Twitter right now. I mean, obviously now a lot is world junior stuff, but I'm trying to find like, an... there we go. He, he retweeted American trucking. Hear that, New York City Council? Trucks and commercial transportation matters. Merry Christmas. Okay. Uh, again, it's just one of the you... things that I didn't I didn't know someone was so passionate about. Especially when you look at any other civilized country that has good biking infrastructure and that's an all around good thing. 
I don't know. Who and you want again, you'll wonder why I'm not on Twitter anymore. <laughs> um, I just I was I was happy in my ignorance of not knowing Dave Starman's takes on uh, bike lanes. bicycle bicycle transportation. But now I can't unknow it. So well, that's why that. we have this podcast is so I can I can teach you all sorts of new things. Yeah, and and to wrap all this up about the streams, we should say that in you know in ninth place behind tenth place, even behind CBS Sports Network, they add all the eight, eight home feeds and CBS in there. You can rank even Bucci and all that. Below all of those would be no streams at all, which is the world that was about like what nine years ago. Yeah, not that long um, ago. We forget about that sometimes. It is it is uh, amazing to think uh, how far it's come in, in like we can critique, a short we amount can of time. Point out things that we feel should be better, but I mean we're still at least I'm still really grateful that I'm not refreshing the S chill boards trying right. to get uh, what's going on. So that's right, and uh, yeah, you are you had. Uh, showed me your, some of your uh, video editing skills um, that you put put together with uh, a little compendium of some great St. Cloud State goals over the years. Um, and just to see some of those goals, just the video quality, you know, that 8-7 to seven game. Yeah. That was, what, 15? That was 2006, 16 years ago. I mean, it looks like it's from the Stone Age. Yeah. Um, and then those were, and I, I mean, wonder if that all... was, I mean, that was probably recorded off of VHS that was probably transferred over to, well, know, certainly stand... wasn't in HD at that yeah, point. It was definitely the, the standard, original broadcast. Yeah. So. Um, but, and then all of those, uh, other than a couple of the more recent ones, like the paling uh, between the legs goals, all of those would have been St. Cloud home games. Cause that's really all that we had. Like mm-hmm. you couldn't, couldn't watch any road games at all. Um, and so like listening to Don Lyons back in the day for road games, like to see where we've come now it's to the point where we can, we can, you know, bitch and moan about the quality of other, you know, away schools feeds. We're a little spoiled because like I said, not so long ago, this wasn't even possible to do any of this. So don't no no shade Omaha. Just step your game up. Uh, then we won't put you in eighth place. Um, yeah, first it's better, thing, it's better stop than nothing. Doing the camera angles of people <laughs> stepping out of the penalty box that'll that'll score a lot of points. And move your bench to the other side of the arena, the rink where it belongs. That's all right. That's well, I, uh, I think you know some uh, some <laughs> Omaha fans on on the Twitter there. Maybe you should. Uh, voice your concerns to to them maybe they would be in a better position to uh to to forward that to the powers that be but i co-sign on on all that i don't i mean i don't really care about the benches thing it's weird but i don't have enough i don't have enough oh speaking uh, of benches that i do have to say that is one knock on north dakota's is the fact that their benches are on the near side that bugs me (laughs) (laughs) That really bugs me. Why does it bug you? I don't like. I don't like you. I I just. You'd rather see consistency, vis- like like okay. just the vision of the line changes on the top of the ri- That's that's how it is. That's how it should be done. And to have those uh, benches be on the near side just kind of throws me for. Well, yeah, the and time. the the from the other side, it's like. One thing that I love is angry coaches, <laughs> angry, angry hockey coaches, especially there was, that was like YouTube videos where like compilations of month by month MLB ejections. There's something it's like, I'll, I'll just put it on late at night. Just if I want to do something, it's so fun. Um, but hockey coaches, I think, I think it's something to do with a suit. Yeah, like, I have a guy angry, like heated, angry in a suit. Uh, I, I'm like, I, I just, I automatically laugh. Um, 
And so when you're, it's, it's hard to see the, the livid coach if it's on the, the close side to the TV. You need, it's kind of like the St. Cloud angle where you can see the, uh, the benches uh, on that far side. So I agree with you that I would like to see that. Although you think we could just have, the, have another camera at the other end of the rink so you could capture the, uh, the angry coaches. But I'm here for the angry coaches. I love them. Uh, and mm-hmm. please give me a nice outburst. Um, I, yeah, I do like and And if I'll someone to, wants to clear I'll try to uh, edit, edit that. Uh, yeah, I'll try up, to yeah, find... Sync up some angry coaches. Yeah, do the yeah, one yeah. where, uh, I think it's still on YouTube, the one where uh, Guazdecki walks across the ice uh, in Grand Forks. Oh, that's um, a good one. <laughs> that is a good one. Yep. Um, Haxall had yeah, some good ones, good. too. Yeah, Haxall yes, had, he, he was middle finger happy. <laughs> you, got, you got fined a couple of times, or maybe not fined, you got suspended yeah. a couple of times for that. There was a game also, I think Guazdecki got kicked out of the game against St. Cloud State and then went upstairs to the press box to continue coaching. He got suspended for that. Was that in St. Cloud? Or was that, that was in St. Cloud? Cloud, yeah. <laughs> he was coaching from the press box. You, tell me what time, like what, what year would that have been? Because oh, if it geez. was, I mean. It was mid-aughts. I bet I would have been at that game. I don't. I, I'm struggling to remember that, and I don't know mm-hmm. why I would have forgotten that. Uh, I met well, Wasdecki once. I mean, there was, you know, they had the elevator. They, I mean, well, I'm sure. It's no, not, it's, I'm certainly so. possible. I just when have when have you? I, I just can't remember being at a game where a coach was ejected, and I think I would have remembered that. Um. But yeah, he would. Yeah, he was. He was testy. Yeah, uh, he's a short little guy. But uh, yeah, he could. Uh, he could get angry. So I'm not. I, I'm just completely blanking on that. If if it was one that I was in the building for, I feel like I would have remembered that. Oh, but um, but yeah, if you want to go back and do some some digging for those, uh, get some. Get some uh, angry coach uh, video clips. I, I would be here for that for sure. Uh, there's a, there's an article here uh, that I find from the Denver Post that talks about uh, January twenty sixth of oh nine. Two thousand nine. Yep. Yeah, so I would have been in the building for sure. Yeah, I do not remember that. Um, but, uh, not, not, yeah, I, I, I'm not surprised, but, um, so he, he would have just put in like, he would have like a headset or an earpiece to like yeah. the, whoever would have taken over for him mm-hmm. on the bench. Yeah. That's, um, I don't think that's allowed. Uh, although it's like, yeah, when, when does, when does, when do coaches get jolly? <laughs> The only one that I can remember that has ever been ejected was Gwazdecki in North Dakota. And now you're saying he was also ejected in St. Cloud. So it's like he was ejected twice. And I can't think of another college coach being ejected. I can't think of them. So it's, that's a rarity. We should have more of those. I mean, it's like, like umps ejecting managers in baseball. It's like we should do that more often in, in hockey, you know. Get the crowd going. It's a little bit of entertainment. I like it. Wait a minute. I realized I might be wrong. Oh, no, it wasn't in St. Cloud. It was the game he was ejected in St. Cloud or in North Dakota. The one where he went, he, where he walked across the ice. Yeah, it was that game. God, I, oh, so he actually, I, so he actually went up top and so he didn't. Uh, so it was that game. So yeah. I thought at first, I think in the YouTube clip, they, they, they're like, what is he doing? He's like, is he like serving his own penalty? Because he, he was <laughs> called, they were called a bench minor on him because he was complaining about something. And, uh, guess who like, the ref hey, was? Uh, give me a couple of guesses. Uh, Marco Hunt. Nope. Don Adam. Nope. Oh. Uh-huh. Todd Anderson. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Todd Anderson. I knew I could get it within a couple of guesses. 
Yeah. So, yeah. He was suspended for one game for violating NCAA rule that does not allow ejected coach to communicate with the team. Um, ejected at the 930 mark of the second period. Um, Kwasdecki watched the second period on a television in the media room, but communicated via headset to coaches on the press box during the third period and overtime while sitting in the press box in North Dakota. That's good. God, I, I swear that was St. Cloud's room. I felt like I would have remembered that if if it was St. Cloud, but uh well. Yeah, I at least at some point that, that video existed, so um that's probably where I'm gonna go after we're done recording here. Yeah. Check that I've, video out. Yep, exactly. Um I am working on a part two compilation. Um I can't find um Judd Peterson's game winning goal against Michigan Tech. So if you find that, send it to me. Um, because I think that's a good one to include. Um, and the, uh, but I, on this list, um, I've got, uh, LeBlanc's, uh, game winning goal against Mankato, uh, mm-hmm. to get us to the, to the final five. And then I've actually, um, I, uh, someone on Twitter actually had the up res. So it's not like HD, but up res videos of artisans goal through the net. Um, in okay. the 2001 final. Hey, you've told five. me about this. Yep, and the um, and the game winning goal. Um, where he, um, uh, I think it was Ryan Malone kind of bowled over Andy Kohler, <laughs> and we won six to five in overtime against North Dakota. So the clinching goal as well. I've added that on. So oh, that'll good. be on the next video. But if you think of any more like key Husky goal memories or whatnot. Yeah, well, let me know. I'll try to dig it up and I'll just add it to the clips because it's kind of fun to kind of look back at and just kind of run through old hockey. Do the, um, what I would consider the dirtiest, greasiest goal of all time was the Will Hammer goal in the BC game from a couple of years ago, uh, where it's just like, he's just like jamming at it, jamming at it. It's just, <laughs> And it finally goes in after about seven whacks at the puck. And it's just a disgusting goal, but but beautiful in, in the same sense. And uh, I would love to see that one because it is it is it is a it, a piece of brutish brilliance. Um, we didn't really have any questions. People had a couple of opinions. Um, Dan Jacobson had uh, UMD at, or UMD at eight. Um, when it comes to his home oh. experience, so he he's not impressed with his hometown team. I do have to say, like, for being in HD now, I think Duluth has the lowest quality of HD that's possible. I mean, they probably just get HD kind of in the skin of their teeth. It's probably I I would agree with that. Um. Uh, anything else? Well, because uh, for me, that about does her. That about does her. So, um, yeah, well, we'll be back. Oh, geez, we nearly went two hours. <laughs> um, we'll be uh, we'll be back uh, sometime next week. Um, obviously, we're gonna preview the big uh, tilt against uh, the Gophers. Um, probably not talk too much about the Manitoba Boom Moose Bison, whatever they are, uh, but. Um, obviously we'll be back and, and then also I think a little uh, little fun we're going to predict the field um, yeah. I think uh, we're going to we're halfway through we got a good look at the pairwise and I think we're going to kind of predict uh, the conference uh, who's going to be the auto bid for every conference and then who's going to be the rest of the 16 teams or the rest of the field so I think that'll be uh, kind of a fun um, kind of a fun fun game we can play that uh, we're going to be terrible at like all of our games. I think last year we, we did, I think we only got one or two wrong each last year. And one of those was like the Atlantic, like we didn't pick the Atlantic team correctly. So we did pretty well last year, actually. Don't sell yourself too short. It's what I do. (laughs) 
Well, uh, that about does it for Weldy. You can find me at More Clappers, M O A R, Clappers on Twitter. And you can always email us. Andrew, what's that email? Yep. That is Huskies Hockey Podcast at gmail.com. Then me an email. Perfect. Sounds good. Uh, if you have any uh, video feed, NCHC stream hot takes, send it our way. We'd love yep. to hear it. So, until next time, go Huskies. Woo! Woo!